forests of eastern Africa contain many different types of primates. This video presents five species, three monkeys and two apes, providing comparisons of feeding, locomotion, communication, and social interaction. The first species covered is the vervet, Cercopithecus ethiops, which is widely spread across Africa since it can survive both in thick forest and in the forest edge grassland habitat. Vervets can also adapt to the outskirts of human habitations, in city parks, around farms and campsites, where there is water, food, and access to trees to afford protection from predators. These relatively small animals, weighing from 7 to 10 pounds, or 3 to 4 kilograms, live in multi-male, multi-female social groups, which include adults, sub-adults, juveniles, and infants. They are one species of a widely ranging genus of small African monkeys, particularly noted for their species-specific facial colors, and are representative of one major type of old world monkey, the Circopithecini. They locomote very easily on the ground because of the similar lengths of their arms and legs and their adaptable hands, which are used flat on the ground but retain strong dexterous fingers, making it easy to grasp branches. They can also jump skillfully from one tree to the next and keep their balance on the swaying tree limbs. Their small size enables them to move out towards the ends of branches where fruit ripens and new leaves are found. Rivets must also share their range with other browsers and grazers. In their open country habitat, the grasses are eaten by herds of ungulates, such as hartebeests and impalas, which occur in great numbers. Giraffes compete for a major vervet food source, the upper leaves of acacia trees, which they can easily reach with their long necks. Elephants also strip leaves and branches from trees, as well as eating grass. In times of drought, they kill many trees by stripping their bark, thus destroying resources which are vital for the monkeys. Elephants also use up a lot of water in drinking, washing, and playing, which reduces the amount available for other species. Vervets fit into the ecosystem by diversifying their diets, as well as where they forage. Because tropical climate, fruit trees bear on a more irregular schedule than is the case in temperate areas. Flowering and fruiting are governed more by the rainfall pattern than temperature, and thus figs can be available at different times of the year. Figs are a favorite food source for many monkeys, particularly vervets. This female is foraging in a fig tree and is followed by her infant, who is old enough to locomote independently in the tree. Many animals and birds will eat figs, so the trees often produce a great many fruits so that some will be left to be the source of new trees. Vervets focus their diets on fruit and new leaves. Because they are not specialized as leaf eaters, they find the new leaves more nutritious and easier to digest than the mature leaves which the leaf eaters consume. The problem of nutrition and digestibility is particularly important for young animals just after they have been weaned, because they are then responsible for finding enough to eat themselves. In non-provisioned troops, between one-third and one-half of the juveniles can starve to death at this stage. Other foods available are flowers and the insects which swarm around the ripening fruit. In drier climates, a very important food source is acacia trees. As well as leaves, in the dry season when other foods are scarce, vervets eat the bark and gum, which are both quite nutritious. They scrape these off using their incisor teeth. In drier climates, another source of food is the fleshy base of acacia thorns, which the vervets can carefully pull free and chew. This ability to harvest the protective devices of acacia thorn trees is part of the adaptation permitting vervets to live in such a wide range of habitats. In addition to trees, vervets also forage on the ground, searching through the leaf litter for seeds, roots, 
corns, insects, and any overlooked food items. Feeding is frequently interspersed with bouts of grooming and play by the younger animals. In learning to eat this varied diet, the infants must carefully observe older animals and often approach and sniff their mouths as if to ascertain what they are eating, which is called muzzling. This type of investigation is not always popular with other members of the troop. In the grassland area, vervets pluck and eat blades of grass, as well as digging for corms and roots. The grass blades represent an easily harvested resource, but roots and corms require quite a lot of effort to dig out, especially since the digger may be displaced by a higher ranking animal when the work is almost done. Once again, infants stay beside their mothers and watch them closely, even when they are not yet fully weaned. Some animals approach others to groom as well as to feed by them, but it is clear that close proximity in feeding makes lower ranking animals nervous and they may move away. Mothers who are lactating must eat not only for their own requirements but to provide milk for their nursing offspring. They must also provide extra energy for infant care which includes constantly carrying their infants and the other requirements of raising them. Acacia seed pods are a useful food resource because they are higher in protein than grass and will last longer under dry conditions. Vervet mothers have two major patterns of weaning. In one, they allow the infant a long period, up to 35 weeks of free access suckling, and then enforce an abrupt weaning, while the other pattern is to begin weaning slowly at a young age and occasionally refuse the nipple, thus encouraging the youngster to forage, so by 30 weeks the weaning is almost complete. Vervets eat insects as well as vegetation and can grab flies on the wing, as this one in the back is doing. Another factor of vervet feeding is the potential for loading many pieces of food into the cheek pouches and carrying them to a safer place for actual consumption. This female is rapidly putting food in her mouth and then carries it to a nearby termite mound, which is a favorite eating and sitting spot for vervets. Here they congregate, eat, groom, and socialize. Vervet females are usually very interested in infants and will often approach a mother and try to handle and inspect the baby. Young juveniles are also attracted to this activity. Often the infants struggle and vocalize, but the mothers are frequently very permissive about allowing others to interact with their infant. Once the struggling is over, this infant actually follows the second female and juvenile away from the mother. Developing social relations with other troop members is a very important aspect of a young animal's maturation. Males frequently protect the group, and this one threatens with a head bob, even though I am quite far away from the females and young. Sentry and defensive roles are very important because vervets have a lot of enemies. This male threatens me with an open mouth yawn, then monitors the level of danger I represent. He is between me and the rest of the group, which is the way that most vervet males protect the group. He then moves away to sit by a female and juvenile who are grooming. The male may be self-scratching to calm himself, or he may, in fact, now be far enough away from the camera to groom for hygiene. As the male approaches the grooming pair, the female leaves, 
and then the male grapples with the juvenile in a classic but brief play bout, wrestling, mouthing, and rolling over and over. He then runs off with a stylized bouncing gait, frequently seen in vervet play, and is closely followed by the juvenile, who also bounces off the bushes in the manner of a very young animal. Some vervets live in more open habitats where there are only a few trees close to a river. This adult male is approached by a juvenile who muzzles his genitals, which is a very common greeting pattern from younger to older animals. After this social contact, the male walks away but threatens the camera with stares as he does so. He does not seem to be afraid of people, but rather uncomfortable with their proximity. These particular animals are more habituated to people because they spend their time around a riverside campground. The whole group is nearby, including this mother who is still nursing an older infant. Another of the group males also uses a yawn threat to indicate unease at the close approach of humans. The juveniles seem less concerned and eat or play by the water. And as we remain quietly, the males also relax and begin to forage in the grass nearby. After a short time, even the females with infants seem reassured and descend the trees to see what is available to eat. However, some individuals are still suspicious and watch carefully, ready to alarm bark if any danger becomes evident, and use a white eyelid flecker as a threat against the camera. This female with her infant is joined by a young juvenile who could easily be the infant's sibling. They sit close together with the mother holding the infant. The raised arm motion is a weaning gesture used to jerk the nipple from the mouth of the infant, who does look old enough to be weaned, but she still seems willing to carry him. Subadults are at an adventurous age. In addition to playing by the river, which does have an element of danger from crocodiles, they may also approach other rather unfamiliar items, such as a person with a camera and make a quick play invitation before running off. All of this is overseen by adult animals who would vocalize if they perceive danger. Here the threat or warning is more subtle, showing the red and blue genitals by the male which is part of the vervet red, white, and blue intimidation display. Play is a major aspect of a young vervet's life, and these two infants in a tree are indulging in locomotor and social play, which will help them develop skills needed in later life. Trees are a major resource in a vervet's world. As often as they are found on the ground, they still require trees for resting and as a lookout position to keep an eye on their surroundings. This is a vital aspect of their continued existence since even quite large predators such as lions and leopards will kill and eat vervets if they can catch them. Lions often lurk in the brush and low trees by stream beds, which are cool places to which monkeys also retire on a hot day. Vervets use a bipedal posture to get a better view of the close-by vegetation when on the ground. Snakes, such as this large python, are a major vervet predator since they can approach so unobtrusively in long grass. Vervets have special vocalizations to indicate danger from snakes and also the approach of birds of prey. They also have a terrestrial predator call, which is frequently referred to as a leopard alarm bark.
This loud vocalization and head bob threat point out the location of the leopard to any vertebrates who do not know where the predator is. It also serves as a signal for the vertebrates to get into trees where they are much more agile than leopards. This particular leopard is not really interested in hunting vervets at this time. However, after hearing leopard alarm barks while walking in a wooded area, we heard a shriek and found a vervet dead because it disregarded alarm barks and came down from a tree about 20 seconds before I arrived on the scene. <laughs> 